So I just realized that before I can record in the studio, I gotta get it organized. And we got it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh man, all right, we're gonna talk about organization here in a minute at the trailhead where I'm running today. Oh, and yes, we're gonna go with it. Organization for the keyword. Uh, I'll explain what this is all about here in a minute. So as I was about to say outside the car, I got in a conversation on Twitter a couple days ago with uh, so just some fans of YouTube and of running and they were asking me for tips on how to pull off a daily vlog, combine it with running. And I gave a couple tips, one of them being make sure you put emphasis on your sleep because that's very critical as a runner and making sure you keep your sanity when you're making a daily video. But in addition, my second point was all about organization. It is so critical that we stay organized as runners with our gear, even though we don't have as much gear as let's say a, a cyclist or a boxer I would say, or I don't know, some of these sports require more equipment than running, but we gotta stay organized. Therefore, I looked on Craigslist last night, actually it was Facebook Marketplace, for a shoe rack because of the four shoes that arrived yesterday that I opened. I just, I feel like we have a good thing here on YouTube and you know, it's really easy to become overwhelmed when you're making and producing and filming and editing and publishing a daily video so if you're not organized, I go crazy. And that was one of my tips to this gentleman on Twitter. Just stay organized, emphasize it, make sure it's at the forefront of your brain all the time because if you lose organization, you, I become overwhelmed very quickly. That's why we've got the shoe rack for the studio. Um, just to, when I'm reviewing, well actually, you know what? When we're doing the running shoe giveaways, I'll put all the shoes on the rack as we're giving them away so I can make sure I get them out to the winners as efficient as possible. Oh, it's exciting. All right, see you at Deer Creek. All right, everybody, calling an audible. That's right, decided not to go to Deer Creek uh, today. I just was thinking, you know what, I think there's gonna be a little too much vertical gain up at Deer Creek. And after Mount Falcon yesterday, believe it or not, my legs are sore. This is a good sign. I love sore legs. It means I'm back to work. And so I'm gonna take it a little easier today. Uh, I'm gonna go back to uh, a dirt trail along the Platte River. And yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask it now. I just can't help it. Are you, uh, question of the day, are you a believer, a sleeper, or indifferent when it comes to zero drop running shoes, all right? Uh, Ultra, as many of you probably know, are zero drop shoes, meaning the offset or the drop from heel to toe is zero. Uh, so these are the Ultra Timp 1.5s. I'm gonna get you my first impressions here back in the studio after I take them out for their, for their first spin. And that's the question of the day. Are you a believer, a sleeper, or simply indifferent when it comes to zero drop because I'm not going to say I'm not going to say zero drop is a movement in the running shoe world not like um, the minimalist movement that sprung up maybe about eh, about 10 years ago now approximately uh, it definitely hasn't taken the running uh, the running movement the running space by storm like that but I would say there are some other companies that are beginning to explore zero drop shoes and who knows maybe there's an employee of ultra who will stumble upon this vlog and be able to go down into the comments and read your feedback as to how uh, whether you are positive or negative when it comes to zero drop and just get some really raw data from you the consumers out there with respect to this style of running running shoe. All right, let's lace it up. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited for the midsole almost more so than the drop. Just so you know, I can sense it's going to be a very, very comfy ride today. All right, let's roll. Here comes the rain again. And uh, I, I wanted to get more shots for you, but can't get the camera too wet. 
basically I'll make up for it in the studio tonight. Uh, and I forgot my uh, I forgot my gimbal today for holding the GoPro. So once again, getting back to organization, I'm telling you, a camera bag is your best friend as a YouTuber. Like, and I just I started charging the the gimbal last night and just forgot to grab it today. So organization, it's key. All right. So I just realized that before I can record in the studio, I gotta get it organized because I can't even step in there right now. Oh man, here's the rack. And here we go, the first impressions of the Ultra Temp 1.5s. This is not my full review, that'll happen after 50 miles. I did six miles today, so a 10K at basically 8.30 pace per mile or 5.15 per kilometer. And I'll just start by saying this is a trail shoe. You probably figured that out based on the footage today. Although, I must say, the outsole lug pattern, we'll talk more about it in a little bit, uh, is pretty aggressive and so the trails that I were on today were very buffed out uh, no no real rocks on the trail but these this outsole pattern could certainly handle more aggressive trails and it's a neutral shoe as well and it's it's okay I'll just say as well it's my first trail shoe from Ultra okay usually I'm a Solomon guy when it comes to trail running a little bit of Hoka uh, but this is my first trail shoe from Ultra and I just did a little research. I didn't know this. I guess I thought they were a little younger, but the, the company Ultra, which their official uh, company name is Ultra Running, spelled A-L-T-R-A, uh, was founded in 2009. So they're 10 years old. So they're, they're passing their 10-year mark, which is pretty neat uh, to, to be able to make inroads into the running shoe marketplace at this point in the ball game. I guess 10 years ago, maybe it was a little more open-ended. But now I can't even imagine trying to find your niche and your product that really reaches a certain demographic uh, because it's just it's so competitive. But I guess 10 years ago, sure enough, they came up with the zero drop. Well, I don't know if, okay, I should, we gotta be careful what I say. I'm not saying Ultra came up with a zero drop concept, but they certainly pushed the ball forward. And if you have any insights into zero drop running shoes, which I'll just say right now, if, in case you don't know, a zero drop running shoe means that the offset or the drop, so basically the slope of the shoe, how your foot sits inside the bed of the shoe, inside the shoe, and it's all based on the stack height of the midsole, so this, this uh, purple section of the midsole here. This is a 29 millimeter stack height in the heel on this Ultra Temp 1.5 and a 29 millimeter stack height in the forefoot, which means 29 minus 29 is zero. And as far as the weight of the Ultra Temp 1.5, my size is coming in at 9.2 ounces or 260 grams, which is, uh, I would say, middle of the road for a trail shoe. Yeah, I would say middle of the road. Definitely not on the heavy end and certainly not light, not as light as, let's say, the Peg 36 Trail, uh, but in a size 9 for men, uh, looking at 10.5 ounces or 298 grams. And through the upper, you're looking at some directional mesh through this upper with quite a bit of overlay action happening. And what are overlays? It's basically this rubber. Sometimes it's a harder plastic on some other with some other companies, and it helps create a little more. Um, a little more lockdown feel and also keeping water out, especially through this toe box area since it is a trail shoe. You're going to be running through, you know, streams or puddles or what have you. So uh, these overlays are fairly significant through this upper and uh, Ultra is trying to make inroads with the uh, gator game. So if you're running in a lot of mud or a lot of dust, and especially in these hot summer months. Uh, in, here in Colorado, the trails turn to dust, basically, where you're, you know, and by the end of the trail run, your sock and your ankle is just all dust. So if you don't like that, or you wanna try and keep as much dust or uh, pebbles out of your shoe, sometimes you can wear gaiters that wraps around your lower ankle. Well, uh, this upper here on the Ultra Temp has this gaiter lock that can connect right there where my finger's at, and then also here in the front at the bottom of the lacing system, or the eyelet chain. I should say uh, and then also back here on the heel counter so you see that velcro so you can attach your gator right there on that velcro 
All right, I'm gonna skip the midsole for this first impression, save that for the full review. I will jump to the outsole real quick. Uh, they created this, they're calling it the Duratread uh, outsole on this Timp 1.5. And I don't know the science, but supposedly this outsole is stickier than the previous iteration of the Timp lineup. So if you are, I would say, especially on the East Coast where maybe you're running on rocks that are smoother or have a little bit of water uh, running over them, or I don't know, just so I, I feel like rocks on the East Coast are a lot slicker than here out, out here in Colorado in the Rockies. So I guess this outsole rubber is stickier compared to the previous iteration. So that, that's good news if you live in an area that, or maybe logs, you know, jumping over logs like I did today, that log was not slick at all, but oh my gosh, you don't want to slip, slip off of a log or a trail system that has a really well-maintained uh, I guess uh, erosion system that might be slick as well and as far as fit goes I actually after running in it today I think I nailed it uh, but I will say that I'm getting a little bit of scrunching up happening through the toe box upper area uh, and again maybe that's just par for the course with ultra with the size of my uh, my forefoot and because again their forefoot action is known for being wide to allow your uh, your toes to splay out and spread out and kind of I don't want to say rest inside the toe box but not be scrunched up which I can I can experience that a little bit sometimes in Nikes uh, which I actually don't mind too much so anyway the fit is on point uh, for the length but I am sensing that the toe box is just a little wide for my foot and for that cushion I'm gonna say I need a little more time to figure out the cushion uh, through the midsole so we're gonna pass that for the for the full review they felt I'll just say they felt good today but uh, I don't want to say I was confused as I was running I just need more time that's it's just the bottom line uh, and again just the only drawback at this point is the scrunching up in the toe box and the positive would definitely be the fact that I ran at Mount Falcon yesterday I had 1800 feet of vertical and my legs my legs are feeling it today especially my calves just a little bit so that zero drop I believe helps stretch out that calf that gastroc muscle, the soleus muscle in my lower leg. Uh, I love that about ultra running shoes and that's part of the reason why I wear them, uh, especially on recovery days, all right? So I already gave you the keyword, already gave you the question of the day. Those are my first impressions of the Ultra Timp 1.5. I need to take them out on some more aggressive trails. Stay tuned for that. Again, I think this outsole pattern is built actually a little more so for aggressive trails with more rocks, more vertical, and I uh, need more time for comfort. Bottom line, I'm excited though. I am excited. Again, it's my first time in an ultra trail running shoe, so we shall see how they treat me moving forward. All right, welcome back to the studio. Welcome back. I got this rack back here, feeling organized now. Here's my, here's my gimbal that I forgot today, so I will pack this away tonight so I don't forget it tomorrow. And yes, we'll be back tomorrow. Sound good, everybody? You're the best. Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching. Ah, oh, that's all for today. That's all for today. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.